concentration day is uh, remembering the events that, that happened and why Leo Ilat Stadium is named Leo Ilat Stadium for a 17 year old, would have been a classmate of a uh, graduate of 1970. 1971. It was the, the, the way I remember the day of the accident. There wasn't there wasn't any the the day of Leo's injury. There really wasn't anything different about that day. We always we were going through the same routines we we had done for for years with Coach Thompson and Coach Forster, and it wasn't you know, nothing made that day spectacular or different until the accident happened, until the injury took place. And you know, it was uh, it was practice. It was no. back then. It was a B team. Now it's called the JV. Uh, you know, younger freshmen and sophomores, it was, uh, it was a, 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 a running play, a very simple play that we'd run hundreds of times, and it's just, it's just a freak accident. That day I was on my way to practice, but I didn't, I never got to the practice field because I stopped at my parents' uh, diner that they had, the Falcons Inn, and I was there visiting with them when we heard the ambulance, and I had no idea what had happened until somebody came and told us. And of course, we rushed over to the hospital. And, and uh, what, I, what I remember too is I was at the house at, the, at our house, and um, cousin Bill came over and was the first one to tell our family that it, what had happened. We were just like basically in shock. We didn't know, uh, you know, the gravity of the situation. So seeing him stretched there, uh, and it seemed like it took forever. The evidence had to come yeah. in from Brownsville. It took like a, seemed like half a day. And then the days after, you know, uh, uh, they're at Mercy Hospital in, in Brownsville. Uh, I guess when his kidneys and everything shut down, uh, was just, uh, uh, they had to run us off. We were so many uh, students yeah. there uh, visiting. And, and yeah, well, he got hurt on the 29th of September and uh, passed away on the 10th of October. So it was a few days that we, he was in the hospital. and. You know, he had, he, he'd get frustrated because he couldn't talk unless he'd get the, the tube out, and he could communicate pretty good, you know. But, uh, what, what I will always remember, you know, kind of towards the, towards the end of it, as far as the funeral was concerned, I remember the community that was behind the whole event, and I remember the, at the actual cemetery, the whole uh, pep squad cheerleaders formed a, the tunnel, like a rece reception tunnel, as if, as if the team was coming through. Well, they let out the whole school. You have to remember back then this, the school district was a lot smaller. So the whole school was closed for that day and from that tragic accident. You know, the uh, naming, uh, renaming of the uh, football field, uh, the what year, foundation. What year, what year did we wind up doing that? That was officially? 1988, I believe. I think Meme uh, was very instrumental in uh, getting it through the school board. The physicality of the campus at that time, everything was here within walking distance. In other words, Los Fernandes Elementary was there. So one, grades one through four were there. Our middle school is where Risaka is today. So there was you know, fifth through eighth grade. And then over here where Cuates is was the high school. So everything was located, again, like I said, within walking distance. And that, made, that was also the closeness of the community. Uh, the way I see it, because you were in eighth grade, I think, when that happened. Or were, were you I were, was a freshman. You were a freshman. Mm -hmm. But I remember a lot of students being pulled out of the program in the junior high. So the teams of the 70s and 80s struggled because I think because of the lack of the numbers. Uh, so it, it affected a lot of people that probably would have played and football would have had the impact on them that, that it had on some of us, which they didn't get to play. But the positive effects of that terrible injury was the renaming of Falcon Field. And, and because of that, we, we established a foundation uh, that we provide scholarships. We've been providing scholarships since 1971. Uh, and we've been, we've been doing that. Last year we gave over $12,000 in scholarship money to area students. So it was a good positive thing that happened from the That's awesome. tragedy. Yeah, and the longevity, I think, and you were talking about it earlier, the longevity of that scholarship and now the foundation. Uh, how many scholarships you know, come for one year, come for two years? But I think that speaks to the, the, the passion and the impact that this, this incident had. It's been going on for since uh, it's 71. I'll let y'all do the math on that, but it's, it's been a while, I guess, five years. four or five years. Well, to me, what made it really my thing was the, the actual vote with the board that it was unanimous and, and we got it. And then started behind the scenes, the planning. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I think, 
Pam Wilson was the art yeah. uh, that she was instrumental in, and told me, well, what is it you want to do? Well, we can start with uh, possible having some kind of name, you know, up on top and having a curtain and we'll do it during the football game. And uh, I'm glad the story's coming out because it, it, now we've been, it's been enough time to where people just know it's Leo Ela Stadium and they don't know the story behind it. Well, we might because we've kind of lived that that history, mm -hmm. uh, but some of the younger people may not know, you know, who was Leo Ela, what, what happened, why is he And I run into a lot of that, yeah. you know, with my with, with uh, my nephews and nieces, well, who's Leo? And then I tell them the story and it's, it's fascinating, you know, they, they, mm -hmm. and it's sad that they didn't get to uh, know. So we were very fortunate that we were, we were able to be there with Leo, to know Leo, to be with Leo. That's mm -hmm. The legacy that lives on now, the, the neat thing that you, you know, sportscasters talk or you read the newspaper and it's always at Leo Aguilar Stadium mm -hmm. or this event's going to happen at Leo, you know, Fields of Faith will be at Leo Aguilar. That, that legacy lives on and for whatever it's worth, it's peace of mind knowing guys that it'll always be there, it'll always be Leo Glass Stadium.